Hey guys, so it's David. Uh, today we're going to replace the relay for the jack plate. Uh, a couple things I want to show you before we do that is I was having a problem with the jack plate. It's been problematic uh, off and on and I had to replace the lift motor and I'll show you that. But before we get into the relay, let me show you what I'm up against. Turn the power on. So on my uh, left side of the wheel is the uh, tilt and trim, or not tilt and trim, but the jack plate. And you can see it's coming up and, and going down. It's working right now, but it's intermittent. And it just seems like lately, every time I get on the water in, in a shallow area where I need that jack plate to get up, it doesn't work. And I gotta get down there and change the polarity. But one thing I want to show you is the motor down here, the top of that, I replaced that. You can get one from TH Marine that's pretty darn expensive. They're pretty proud of it. I bought an aftermarket on Amazon, and I just want to tell you, don't be afraid of that. The only thing I would suggest is where the wires go into the motor housing, put some black epoxy uh, sealant caulk on that. I use some of that waterproof adhesive caulk uh, just to seal it up, but uh, I've had it on here for about three months and haven't had any problems. But what we're going to do today, because of the intermittent working of the relay, I want to show you where it's at. This is a uh, 2018 Ranger 520L, and it's a little difficult to get to, but one of the reasons I want to show you and why is on the fuse i actually uh painted jack plate on there because i was eating up fuses and actually had one distorted and i believe it's from that motor that i showed you that replaced that was causing some of the problem so on a ranger it's a little difficult to get to but i want to show you what we're after for the jack plate relay it's back here in the corner you cannot access it any easier from going under the rear uh access plate for the pumps and things like that for the power poles so it sits right behind the battery switch but to give me a little bit more access i'm going to take this battery switch out of here as well it's just four screws so let's get started we're going to turn the battery to the off position so we got everything dead i've already uh started these screws out of here uh, to shorten the length of the video because of the location of it and it's challenge to get to you're probably not going to be able to watch the whole video but you can see this is now can be pulled out of our way uh, but i'm going to leave it right there for now i'm going to do my best to video the removal it's just two screws on each side uh you can you've got a drill motor but it's a little hard to get back in there so hopefully it won't take me too long to get it out I know I'm blocking the view with the camera, but give me a second and uh, we'll pull it out of here and we'll get started. Want to do it real time so you know what you're up against when you do it yourself. The biggest problem is getting alignment of the screwdriver because of all the sonar cabling and everything that runs back in here. The back side of the screw is the hardest one because you're actually doing it blind. You can't get eyes on it. And so it's a matter of feeling for that back screw. And so, though I would love to use my drill motor, it's just probably next to impossible uh, to get it back in there like you need. So what I'm doing is trying to finesse the tip of the screwdriver into it and then work my hand back to back out so that's what I'm doing right now and there is a little lip back there so is you get ready to get all the way backed out if you drop it 
it's not going to go into the build or hopefully will not roll into the batteries. Uh, so I did drop it, but it, it just laid right there in the corner. So I got the first screw off. Grab the screwdriver. And we'll start on the closest side here. Get a little light on it. Again, use your fingertips to finesse down there in the location of it. Set that Phillips. It's a Phillips screw. the camera so you can see what we're doing. So here's what the relay looks like. The green and blue go back to the motor and uh, they're quick connects so that'll be an easy thing. And you've got your hot and it is uh, wired into the switch here and then your ground is here. So we've got the battery in the off so what I'm going to do now is disconnect keep an eye on what you disconnect here so when you go to put it all back together you don't inadvertently leave something off and then something not work for you Ooh, almost lost that all right so we're looking for the negative Washing there, we don't want to lose. Alright, we got the ground disconnected. And now we're looking for the hot. So on the relay, it actually is going to run to a fuse before it runs to the winding harness. So this is a replacement. This is a factory, but this is the one we're after right here. So I'm going to have to cut the fuse out and then reconnect to the hot on the battery. So I'm going to do that right now. So this wire goes to the switch and there's no need to have to redo it. So I'm going to cut right here and we'll put a new heat shrink on there so I've got power disconnected now and even though I'm not going to use the fuse holder again because the new one comes with one you'll want to keep the actual fuse itself out of there uh, because they're not cheap all right so now the only thing I have to do, as I mentioned, you got a blue and a green that runs to the back of the motor. So we're going to disconnect those and leave those for another time later on in the repair. And then what goes to the switch up by 
the steering wheel is these. However, it is very difficult to get to. It's way back up in there. So I am gonna get cut it here, give myself plenty of room to work with, and we'll strip that down, get the outer jacket off, and we'll just put the uh, new connection to the up down switch right here so the first one is just an outer protective jacket and I'm trying to score that without getting into the wires themselves so I'm twisting around getting through the sheath and I looked at those connections back in there and Ranger used a heat shrink on them so I am fine to leave them like that I'm going to need just a little bit more real estate than that to work with and I'm going to use heat shrink electrical butts to make it uh, waterproof because in the back of these marine live uh, battery wells it's pretty humid so all I'm doing right now is just stripping the protective coating off of this but I'm trying to be careful part of it came off and I don't want to inadvertently damage the wire so I'm going to pull these out of here one by one to get I didn't get a full decent cut all the way around the rubber sheath that protects the electrical wires and now I'm in fear of maybe damaging them so this is what I got this is what I've been working at so I've got the three and I got this little piece of sheath here so I'm going to cut that off inspect the wires make sure I don't have any problem and then down here I know I'm going to need to got a heat shrink on here so pull the, this off because we're going to need to replace that and what I'm doing right now is this is the the hot coming out of the uh, the switch and I've got a little bit left over of a heat shrink on it so that's what I'm working to take off right now and, nope Done. So I got my new pack. So I'm gonna take the phone out of the holder and show you what it's working with. So this is the new one. So the green and blue will go to the motor connection that I showed you back there. These are the female ends, and coming from the motor are the male ends. We'll connect those. They're color coordinated for up and down. We've got our hot, and it's already got the fuse relay built into it. But it's, I'm going to have to cut this lug off because, as you saw, it goes to a switch on my Ranger, and then we'll run the block. And then I got to run, cut these off. Be, even though these butt connectors are okay, I like to use heat shrink butt connectors, and that seals it. You could even put an additional. Um, sheathing heat shrink over it if you want uh, just for added um, moisture protection and I uh, may do that as well. So let me go ahead and put the phone back on here and first thing we're going to do is I'm going to snip the hot on this one diameter of this is bigger than the blue, so I'm going to have to grab a heat shrink yellow real quick. That's 
So we're doing this in real time, walking you through it. You know, I, I know a lot of guys are intimidated about working on their boats, but listen, it's just nuts and bolts and screws is all it is. You do not have to be a master mechanic for this. So the first one I'm going to do is connect the butt connector to the switch. And again, this is for the fuse. This will give us protection should the motor burn out on the jack plate and like I said I believe I was experiencing some of that just working on the butt connector right now squeeze that down then I'll heat shrink that in a minute what we're going to work on now is connecting the, the blue purple and green to the new one so just want to make sure I got the routing good yeah. I'm going to cut the existing terminals off and I'll stagger these just a little to give me a little bit more play in it. All I'm doing is taking the new ones, cutting off the ones that are not heat shrink. I just believe you get a better seal with those heat shrink ones. three of these out of here. I'm going to attach to this end first. I'm going to vary the depths of these so they're all three not side by side. I'm going to do the purple a little bit shallower. You probably could get away with a red heat shrink looking at the diameter of these but I've got the blue out so the blue is where I'm going with there's the first one pull a little tension on it and it did not want to come off so I'm comfortable with it I can get away with the blue one so we'll do the green next. I'm going to go ahead and strip both of these while I'm down here. Twist the ends. Grab the blue heat shrink connectors. You can get these heat shrink connectors at Lowe's, but the um, place that I find is uh, Harbor Freight Tool. You can buy them in bulk. Paying for the middleman. Alright, so we are ready for the new relays to hook up. So I gotta quickly strip the, the wire ends on the new one. I know I'm doing that out of camera frame, but if you're taking on this repair yourself, you don't need to see. How to strip a wire, I know you how to do that. Yeah. Twist those in so they go in. So I'm gonna do that. First one is the shortest one and that's the purple. Fold the other ones out of the way. I'm gonna actually go ahead and put the crimps on the actual connector. 
Alright. So the first one is purple. Visualize it going all the way in before you squeeze it down. Next one will be blue. And I just lost my purple. So purple, because of that, I am going to go to red because that pulled off. That tells me right there that the blue is too big a diameter. So if you're doing this repair, you want to use a red butt connector. And the red is a little bit smaller diameter on the inside. It'll get a better bite on it. get three red butt tickets. I will be right back. So the blue slipped off. The only reason I went with blue to begin with is that's what came with the uh, actual harness. So I'm going to go back to the boat side first. see it pass into the butt connector itself before you put any pressure on it. So that was a lot tighter fit getting that in there I felt it so be a lot better off with that. Second when you get these little strands that fray, you got to pause and make sure they're all the way in there. And you want to visualize the passing of that wire into that butt connector for you. Let's put the last one here. got all three ready to receive again this runs up to the steering wheel where the switch is and I can see my yellow butt connector has come off it's uh, that's frustrating we'll have to do that one uh, with a red as well we'll go ahead and connect the blues one of the things with the heat shrink that helps as well is if you get a pull on the wires or something while you're trying to fish something later on, you have less tendency to pull a wire out of a connector because the heat shrink actually adheres to the wall of the insulation on the wire. So it's twofold. It protects it from moisture and it protects it from becoming disengaged. Oh, 
just as I started to do the green, it slipped out, so I've got to work it back in there. one is the blue one. And the wires are a little stiffer with the uh, outside sheet on it, so they're not as flexible. So it gets a little challenging on the last one. All right. So these are connected and ready to heat shrink. <clears throat> we'll wait on that. Grab a new yellow one. That one slipped off. I just don't have enough on it to leave it that way. So, because that yellow slipped off, I have a feeling I should be able to get a blue one on there boot it up there a little. Just not enough. So we got to grab another yellow. yellow connector did not hold and slipped off the fuse connector on the switch side. So I'm having to reseat that one is what we're doing right now. I didn't even see it come up, I just saw it laying down there. I'm going to shorten this just a little, make it a little cleaner. On it. 
visualize the wires good. All right, gave her a little tug. We're good that time. So we got the switch wired to the fuse. And I'll double check and make sure there's a fuse in there. Yep. So this looks to be a 40 amp fuse. You can see that in there. Good waterproof one. So do all wired up. So one of the things we can do right now is I'm going to quickly connect the hot, or I'm sorry, the ground, just to make sure. The one thing I did not do though is hook up the two. So what I'm going to do is just test before I button everything up and, and go ahead and put the screws in and everything. I'm just going to make sure everything works. That way, I'm not having to take everything apart. And then one of the things that I like to do for the, uh, the quick connects is I use some dielectric grease. I put just a little bit on the male ends and then I'll push them in there. If you put it on the female ends, there's a chance you could overfill it and then you got it going all over the place. I'm going to put just a little dab on each end. You don't have to go crazy. Not greasing wheel bearings. Just want to have a good clean finish. So what we're going to do now is put blue to blue. We are going to test to make sure everything's working before I put it up. So everything's connected and I am going to go ahead and connect my ground. Make sure we got power to it. This will be the last thing before I put everything back together. And because you've seen how it came apart, you are not going to have to see how it all goes back together. So got my ground connected to the battery, got my hot going to the switch, I've wired up going to the front of the boat, I still have to heat shrink all my connections, but we are ready to test. I'm going to turn the battery to hot, just want to make sure nothing's touching the hot, you don't have a tool laying around anywhere that can touch it, so we're good to go hot. I've got power to the boat, and my new re relay, Shit now the motor it's going down it's going up so that's all there is to it it's the biggest thing is just access and time you can see real time I had a couple of problems with the diameter I am going to heat shrink these and I'm going to run everything and wire wrap them and zip time and get it all cleaned up back there but this is not a big deal putting in a new relay it's just getting to it and just making sure you line the colors up to where they go. I hope it helped, guys. I uh, hope you catch a lot of fish on the water. We'll talk to you later.